Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something, boy. And I, you know what, Isaiah? I miss you, bro. I miss you. <laughs> we 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 missed the week, man, and we didn't get to, to you know you know empty ourselves, you know, flush a few down last week. But we are back. Huh? I'm back with my That's boy right. Isaiah. What you got on That's your right, mind though. today? First of all, tell me where you Listen. been. I don't even know where this guy been. Here, he was missing in hey. action. I put a ABB out of Zell, freak <laughs> Zell. I had to go up to Washington, D.C., Nate, dog. And okay. I had to put on my little politician hat. But, you know, as you already know, my daughter has type 1 di- uh, diabetes. Yes, sir. And we are, my wife is on the board for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, JDRF. They're the leading uh, nonprofit organization uh, that is leading the way in terms of type 1 diabetes research and um, they're advocating on our, on our all the type one families behalf in terms of, you know, further research and science and, you know, uh, things that are going to help with the, the management of diabetes and then ultimately a cure. So we have we went we had the opportunity to go up there as the, the chair family for JDRF this year to go to D.C. and lobby pretty much and advocate for more funds to be allocated towards finding a cure for type one diabetes. So that's what the family and I was up there doing. It was a good cause. I wasn't on I wasn't on a break from you, Nate Dog. I was out there just taking care of business. You understand me? Yes, sir. But can I ask a question here and uh, yeah. I hope it's I hope you know this answer. What is the difference between a type one and type two diabetes? Yeah, so simply put, I can get all into all kinds of the science, but simply put, type one diabetes really comes from the standpoint of think about it as like a ticking time bomb. Right. And, you know, at, at some point in time, your your pancreas stops working. Right. And your yes. body is not able to produce insulin. So that is going to happen at any point in time. We had people as young as six months old right. uh, that their their diabetes, you know, pretty much started at that point. We had people as old as like 39 years old where it mm-hmm. started. Mm-hmm. Um, type two, obviously, is going to be uh Simply put, where you can probably you can pretty much find your way out of it, right? Depending on your lifestyle, uh, diet, things of that nature, right? There's is something That's that me. you can to. get assistance yeah. with, right? It's still right. your body still will stop producing insulin for that period of time, but you can obviously pretty much you know recharge and get that thing going again. Yes, uh, that's that's the most simple way of going about it um, in terms of explanation. Um, it's a lot more detailed than that, but that's that's on a that's on a thirty thousand square foot level. I hate bro. wow. Wow, my my house is less than two thousand square feet, so I guess I can't get up there. Uh, let me say, but uh, you know, it, it, I'm glad that you're you're active in this. Uh, I've seen the down times with you, with you, with your daughter. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've never, you know, and one thing about you, and I've learned over the year, I can, I can, the way you walk and the way you look, I can tell <laughs> something's dangerously, dangerously wrong. Not. Yeah. Not just wrong because you are a different person when it comes to your family. Most people are, but I'm saying yeah. it wasn't like somebody beat up your daughter. It was just when she went into that uh, situation, man. You were just, I was like, man, should I say something? Should I, you know, because yeah, you had a look. It's on hard your to face. shake it, man. It's yeah. hard to shake it, man. Whenever <laughs> we know that the situation that Nate Dog was talking about is one day my my daughter's blood sugar got super high, super high, and they just for whatever reason, whether it had been. Uh, her, her her hormones or, uh, you know, I don't know what was going right. on, you know, growth spurts, you know, for whatever reason, we couldn't get her blood sugar down, you know, so a combination of her hormones and her, her being dehydrated, her body just was not uh, getting rid of the sugar in her body. So her, her blood sugar stayed high, which put her in a, obviously a dangerous state in terms mm-hmm. of her internal organs. So we had to take her to the emergency room and from the emergency room, they made her, you know, get transferred by a paramedic over to the uh, to Children's Hospital, and that was a whole deal. Spending another day there, so it was 
the, that time that we were still recording, obviously we still had a job to do. So I still had to show up to the Cowboys and record right. and do all the shows. And that day I was trying to shake it, Nate, but it was all over my face. Yeah, it was, man. And, and, and <clears throat> in your experience with that, what you was telling me, and I'm just, just a little bit of, just like how you was trying to talk to the nurses and they was like, we got this. And you like, I know my daughter. And oh, yeah. man, I, I just felt so bad for you. I started shutting down the whole show that well, day. Nate, they, no shit. You know what, Nate? <laughs> they, they threatened. I pretty much got threatened to get arrested that day. Yeah, but it's your kid. It's your kid. Yeah. And it's not like you're not going from experience, you know, about easing her pain and making it easier for her. And uh, that, that's yeah. what the doc, yeah, you, y'all was wanting the same things, but. You know, right. everybody ain't the same. So, but anyway, I'm glad we got through that. I'm glad yeah. you went to DC. You and your wife. I'm glad that she's a chairperson and, and your yeah, daughter's yeah. a beautiful representative because she has an understanding of this type Thanks. one diabetes that she has. So I'm I'm just so Thanks. super excited for you, man. And one day I hope that uh the world can contribute to, you know, making this go away, you know, or helping I it. I appreciate you, Nate Duh. Yeah. I appreciate you, Nate Duh. But you know one thing that's not going away, Nate? What's that? Training camps? No, they're not. You know another Tra- thing ain't going away? <laughs> What's that? Sarah Cap. Mm. Sarah Cap ain't mm. going away either. Because, you know, I and know where you're going is- with this. Now, training camps have begun. Yeah. And there's going to be some guys that just aren't reporting to camp. And mm. I don't think the Dallas Cowboys have a problem with Tony Pollard not reporting. However... Right. Tony Pollard is going to be playing underneath the salary cap, Nate, dog. And right. the reason being is because the deadline has come and gone, and the man didn't get no contract. No. He didn't get a contract. They are telling him, you are playing underneath the salary cap. What does Mr. Nate Newton, the, the bulldozing big dog 61, how do, how, how do you feel about running backs not getting the extension let me in say regards this. to Tony Pollard? We'll let get on the other guys. Let me say this right here. Uh-huh. Uh, Barkley is paying under the franchise tag. Did he sign a – you don't know. Did he sign his tag? Uh, Barkley has not signed his tag. Barkley did not get an extension. Barkley does not plan on reporting to training camp. Tony Pollard is playing up under the franchise tag. Correct. It is safe to say l- – look at me. It is I'm, safe I'm right here. to say <laughs> that these two – Premier running backs will play for less or equal to a high paid punter, a kicker. Oh, I'm, no. I, I, I tried to tell everybody, uh-huh. as great as I think Barkley is, the closest thing for his twitch muscles to Barry Sanders I've seen, and you alerted me Thanks. to that. Thanks. As sweet as Tony Pollard is, and as explosive as Tony Pollard is, in two years, if the running back position or the Players Association can't come up with a better way to play players than to slot players, running backs will be making $2.7 million. This is in two years, people. Thanks to the Kansas City Chiefs, Thanks to several other teams that can take running backs the way, and this is not a knock on Coach Andy Reid. Coach Andy Reid can see a running back and see what his uh, uh, abilities is and plug him in. And now other teams are starting to plug in. The kid hmm. out there with the Raiders, I know he's sick. He had a hell of Josh a year. Josh Jacobs. Showed out. Josh Jacobs. He, the kid for. Uh, uh, San Diego. He, what about Dalvin Cook? <laughs> he least got most of his contract. He least I got most of his contract. This is the thing that I'm trying to tell. But no, but, no, but he's free right now, Nate, because nobody wants to pay him. But he's still on that last contract. At least he got most of that because just think, Pollard ain't finna see it. Uh, young, young, young New York Giants running back. Who's the best running back in the league just athletically? Yes. Who can who can catch you 80 balls out of the backfield, <laughs> can rush the ball 200 times, and I'm telling you, in Isaiah, me and you, we do shows for the Dallas right. Cowboys too. And I try to come on, I try to tell everybody. I love Tony Pollard. 
I think he's he's smooth. I think he's nice. I think he's powerful. But I I, I asked myself, and I asked everybody that would listen, why did they give him? Why did they franchise him? They said they don't want to lose him. You're not going to lose but, him. Who's going to sign uh-huh. him? You see, everybody keep telling me somebody will sign him. See, but Nate, the, the, the decision on Tony Pollard to me makes sense. It makes sense from the Dallas Cowboys perspective because the Dallas Cowboys are t- dealing with a running back who has never truly proven himself as a, the sole running back, as the primary running right. back. Last year was a mixed bag with Zeke and everything, right? We knew that TP was carrying the, the weight of the team, but – this time, in terms of being in this role and the expectation being set as high, he hasn't been in that position. He's also coming off an injury, a leg injury at that. Okay, so I understand it from the Cowboys' perspective after, especially coming off of uh, Ezekiel Elliott contract, uh, their hesitation to say, hey, show me. Show me that you can make but this you, happen. you still and have I, to and franchise that might- him? He's going to get t- – you, di- you did not have to franchise him because of that same injury. That yeah. I wouldn't have franchised him. Why? Mm-hmm. Tell me why. Is he better than yeah. the kid in New York? No. Is he better than the kid in San Diego? For um, it's, it's uh, I, I guess I guess who your yeah. offensive coordinator is. I guess we're gonna go with whoever yeah. your offensive coordinator ooh, is. Ooh, well, you know who's down there in San Diego now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just saying this right here. Yeah. Tony has developed into a premier running back. Uh, he got better as the year went on with his third down blocking. Like I said, I, I love Tony, but I, I saw where the league was going. Who was a bigger freak for Zeke than me? I'm, I'm sitting up there a lot of times when we doing shows. I wouldn't even respond because it, it, it wasn't going positively for Zeke. But after this year here, <laughs> I, 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 I told him, like, Zeke got to go. Or you, you offer him a you offer him two mil, three mil at the most, and people are like that's disrespectful. In two years, if the NFL Players Association does not start slotting, because what is going to happen here is in about four years, huh? Your quarterback getting one point a uh, hundred and seventy five million dollars, <laughs> and and everybody else getting ten five. Somebody going to rebel. They're going to look at the quarterback like, you know what? It, this ain't working. It, it's going to happen. You're it's right. Gonna it's going to happen because right now, because quarterbacks, I mean, what? You remember when Russell Wilson originally signed his contract when he was with the Seattle Seahawks? It was at $40 million. That was, right. what, five, however many years ago, right? Four, four years, years ago, ago, somewhere around there. About four and a half years That was $40 years million. Dollars. Yeah. Now the going rate for a, a premier quarterback is $50 million. And, 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 and this is the thing. They're signing. I'm talking into my mic. They're signing less than premier quarterbacks to mega dollars. Some you mean like player Danny Dimes say, making forty million dollars? Huh? Danny Danny Dimes is making. He's signing for forty million a year. Wow. I, I know that he has a super mm-hmm. offensive coordinator, head coach, Dable, and so and he makes him a. He makes him able. Because yeah. if he wouldn't have been there, <laughs> he'd have been Kane. He'd have been gone. <laughs> he'd yeah. have been gone, yeah. bro. Wow. So so to, to your point, Nate, just I want to read this real quick. This is from uh, CBSSports.com. Mm-hmm. It says, on average, running backs currently make $1.8 million a season. The only positions that running backs make more than are long snappers. Long snappers are making almost $1.1 million per year. Punters are making $1.5 million per year, and fullbacks are making $1.7. So long snappers, punters, and a handful of fullbacks in the league are the only position groups that, on average, running backs make more than. Kickers make two point, almost $2.2 million per season. So we've gotten to the point where, where, where running backs are valued less than kickers on average, Nate. I, I didn't. You read that. You you went out and researched that. I, this is what I gathered from just when me and you yeah. talked earlier. I, I just like in t- because I, I listen to a lot of the NFL guys on the NFL Network, and 
And they was like, this guy is this. And they was talking, this guy is that. This guy, Saquon is this. Pollard is this. Eckler is this. Uh, Devin is this. And the guy say, it yeah. don't matter. In two years, they'll be, they won't be valued more than kickers. They will be. They will be. But they won't. It's what it's going to remind you of is a fourth and fifth pitcher slash reliever. You know, you go into the season, and all everybody talk about is starting pitching and starting pitching. And as the season go on, everybody's looking for, man, we, if, we, if we had a fourth pitcher, if we had a fifth pitcher, if we had a reliever, you know, yeah. a bullpen, if we had a – and that's what that running back is now. That and Andy Reid has a hand on a handle on it. I think the coach at Detroit has a handle on it. I think our coach understands it too. I think our head coach understands how to use running backs. If, Nate, if you had to pick one running back in this league to be your starter on your team, who are you, who are you going with? I'm going with Barkley, and I'm talking about if he is healthy, bar none, brother, bar none. Man, if he is healthy, that, that, that's my Barkley guy. You over Henry. That's my uh, – yes, sir, because uh, Henry ain't going for, – for them to be wanting to trade Henry, mm. as good as back as he is, Rip. you know, he could be – He's been getting yeah, beat up now for yeah. some years, so. Yeah, he been – yeah, when you averaging 380 <laughs> 80 carries a year with, with pads, but pads – Hey, man. It don't matter. It don't Henry, matter how big you are. It, 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 it's just amazing. Who's had the, the more 20-yard runs? I bet you Henry is up there sure. high. Who's had the more 70-yard runs? I bet you Henry yep. is in the top three. He, he is legit. But Barkley can catch that thing coming Buddy. out of the backfield, man. And I still think they have not tapped into who he really is. I really think, and, and I think the head coach for the Giants, man, you watch out for the NFC yeah, East NFC, this year. The, the, you the watch NFC out, is man. weak. The NFC East is strong. All yeah. Right. So but before yeah. I let you switch the topic up, Nate, let me, I have to ask you this question. You know, we like, we have a lot of Cowboys fans that listen. Is Ezekiel Elliott going to sign back with Dallas Cowboys by the start of the football season? I, I hope he could. I hope he could. Uh, you know, offering by like, and I, my offer don't change. Offer him a couple of mil, two point five, three mil, guarantee it all. Let him come on in here, uh, yeah, because we know what Zeke and Tony right. is together. They they unstoppable. Uh, I, I I don't know about the, you know, they 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 got this kid that they drafted. Uh, you got talking about Deuce? Yeah, they got Deuce. I, they have Ronald Jones. Yeah, yeah. And they, Ronald Jones is who they got they, as a replacement yeah. for Zeke. And, and you know what? Coach McCarthy will find a way to use him. I like Zeke personally. I never turned my back on him. But I, I, I've been I, – I, Zeke was my last back that I would get. I would have gave the yeah. dollars to. Zeke was elite. He, he, he was yeah. special, man. Uh, a little bit of the special wore off because he lost his explosion. I, I mean, his long-term explosion. I mean, like Zeke used to go 50, 60 yards. Now Zeke is a 20-yarder and – he humping after that. He... <laughs> you know how you run? You be running, you get out of the whole group, but after about 20 yards, you're going to hump it and try to keep going. <laughs> I love Zeke, though. Know, he's a good block. He's a good man. I agree. I agree. What what you want to switch over to, Nate? Uh, I'm going to tell y'all something, uh, and this is Big Noon being serious, and I'm, I'm talking to all the young people. You jump in yeah. whenever you want, Isaiah. Talking to most of the young people, the young athletes, uh, the outdoors type person that uh, from riding motorcycles to hiking, uh, the nation is on fire. It, it, the nation is averaging 95 uh, on average, degree wise, hot, 95. You just look everywhere. I mean, you probably can go up near yep. Washington and find consistently low. Things, but even I think even it was there, 90s I, up there I, last week. I know, yeah, but I, you know, from Arizona on over to New York on down to Florida, it's, it's being record highs, record highs due to the fact that we don't have any respect for the trees. I'm not an earth person, save the world, nah, but you can't cut down every tree you see. 
You know, you got to save some of them because that's God's natural shade, you know. But anyway, uh, I just want to say yeah. this right here. You know, I, I like getting out on my bike. I like doing things. And uh, I, I talked to a few people that are, ri- are riding in bike races. This uh, And it's coming this week. And they've been talking to me for about three weeks. I've called several trainers. I've called uh, several people that, you know, and that has that knows about conditioning athletes like me who's been heavy and big and guys that are, are, are low body fat two and three and four body, percent body fat like you and what it, what I find out consistently is that what I want to tell all of the parents and all of the kids that will listen if you have an event that's coming up now and you haven't been training for at least four maybe six weeks you haven't been training preparing yourself for this, you may want to think twice about trying to deal with this because it's one thing to go out there for 10 minutes, 30 minutes or, or, you know, versus going out there an hour and a half trying to exert yourself. Let me give you some pointers here because I'm saying if you would have started six weeks ago, the first thing a trainer is going to tell you is what are you eating? What are you eating? Are you drinking enough? Not just water, but uh, electrolytes. What type of proteins, what type of potassium you're putting in your body. Some of you guys and gals that are high output athletes, you need to go to a doctor and get yourself Lower. checked. Uh, they can run a test that can, give, can, can help you uh, see what your deficiencies is because you don't need to go into a full body cramp or some type of heat stroke before you realize like, I, I I wasn't prepared. The guys that I've talked to, Isaiah, said, Nate, not only should they be sipping water all day long, they should be sipping some type of Gatorade, some type of Powerade, and they should be getting out in this weather, not for long periods of time, but uh, enough so your they body won't go into shock, you know, uh, a lot of people say, well, I never cramp, especially the young people. I never cramp. Well, you never exerted yourself in this tight weather. You never pushed yourself to the limit. I remember when I used to play for the Cowboys and Coach Johnson first got here, we went to Austin. And one thing we did, we drank water all day. We, had, we beat them bananas yep. to death, uh, Gatorade. And we just all day, we, they kept us eating, eat right. little meals, you know, uh, turkey with a Did tomato, you, uh, maybe a little bit of cheese, but not in a whole lot yeah. of mayonnaise, maybe a little bit of mustard. You know, you you got to find out eating those little light meals because your body is is is, is going to be exerting itself and it's going to need extra right. energy. Anything you want to add to yeah. that? So Isaiah? I remember back when I was playing, especially, you know, obviously Dallas was hot. I know, I know some people used to go out to, right. what's the name of the place? Super hot here, around here. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. What is no, it what was the people used to have training camp out here in Dallas? It was a super hot place. I can't remember. San no, Antonio? No, no. San Antonio was indoor. So, uh, anyways, okay. uh, I, I specifically when I – Wichita. Wichita. We, Wichita we Falls. Us, right. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I heard. Heard that was terrible. Uh, that was terrible. <laughs> but, <laughs> that was one heat cramp. Now, I ain't never ta- never knew uh, Pedialyte Light tastes so good. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember when I was playing in Jacksonville specifically, I didn't know – I thought Dallas was humid until I got to Jacksonville. Right. Jacksonville was a was a, a whole nother level of disrespect because I remember sweating so <laughs> much that, that my, I used to right. wear these little three quarter sleeves, and, they, and I remember it wearing these three quarter right. sleeves, and it looking like I had just kind of got out of a pool. Like that's how humid it was. Wow. And we it was so much so. Obviously, we had an amazing training staff and an amazing strength and conditioning staff. And they were on top of all this all this um, science. So we had to weigh in and weigh out of practice. And I never forget, I used to right. lose about seven to 10 pounds per practice, training wow. camp practice, seven to 10 pounds. And the linemen, mm. Nate, linemen, the big fellas like you were losing anywhere from, from right. 12 to 20 pounds, 12 to 20 pounds, Nate, of water. Wow. So what wow. you got, so what Nate is telling you guys right now, he is absolutely correct. If you are not, if you're not built for this, if you're not used to this weather, then you guys need to make sure that you prepare yourself to be exposed to this weather because it 
you have to train yourself to be acclimated to this. Nobody is built for this weather unless you were born in the Sahara. No, it ain't. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So you have to. And then you're going to have on all type of yep. clothes. You know, try to hold that moisture in. Yep. You know so you got to hydrate. And I, I, I leave it, I'll leave it with this, Nate. I tell people all the time, especially in the summertime, y'all. Yeah, this is real. If you are waiting until you're thirsty, it's too late. Way too late. Way too late. Your body is telling you, I'm finna cramp. If your lips go dry, way too late. If you stop sweating, way too late. It's too many signs that will tell you, you know, I, oh, I, I wasn't sweating. If you start a race in this tight weather and you ain't sweating in a few minutes, uh -oh. something ain't clicking right. You need to get over there and just start drinking and don't worry about a race. So you're saying, so you're saying our boy Barry Church, whenever we go live on TV, his head starts sweating. You're saying that he's nice and conditioned. That's what you say. He said he's hydrated. <laughs> he's nice conditioned. Yeah, church conditioned up, baby. <laughs> wow. You got on your boy like that. I can't wait to tell him. Over. Oh, I got to call him and tell him for you say I said. <laughs> we'll get him on there. We'll get him on there. Hey, man. Nate, it's good to see you, big dog, man. Um, you know, we take we take a little good time off. Where, hey, you and I are both headed down down to Oxnard so, soon. Yeah, you you gonna be there about four days before. Oh man. yeah, you gonna be there I when? Get, I, I I ain't coming to the I ain't coming to the uh, twenty. Uh, yeah, that's 30th. where I'm coming down. Cause they ain't yeah, we, we coming the down 30th. the same day. I ain't I, yeah, I ain't finna nope. go down there. Walk through. Watch the hey man, guess who's starting in the walkthrough? Oh really? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll be down there really? at the same time. Be Nate. Are you driving down there? Oh, always. No, you and are forever. Yeah, I'll make sure my car has got all it need, all the fluids. Man, I, 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 I <laughs> so have, I can go right I have to channel Paso, my, my inner Nate dog. I got to drive down to Galveston here in a, in a in a in a few days, so I'm gonna channel my inner Nate and, and put my okay. put my get my sleep, get my hydration, you know, and be ready to rock. You got to send me yeah. all your all your road snacks so I can be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, all I'm right, real, man. man. We always I'm say, real. what do we just do, Nate? We flushed another, flushed another one, another one. Thank you, Niagara. Yeah. Hey, and yeah. until y'all hear us next time, make sure y'all support all the time. We'll see y'all again next time.